chest. This boy is fueled like fire. So start melting, lady. I thought of Prince. I thought of, because Prince was supposed to play the part. Declined for some reason. I think because of the wardrobe and because Prince had his own style. Rush Hour. It was so much fun, man, working with Jackie Chan, man. This guy, he's amazing, man. I definitely uh, prepared myself, because I knew it was Jackie Chan. I didn't want to, you know, uh, let him down. I worked out, lift weights, ran, you know, the first one. Uh, made sure I was in tip-top shape, so whenever he was like, come on, you know, ready, I was ready. Behind you. But he made it so easy, man, with the martial arts and all, you know, stuff. Uh, he was just swinging me around. Basically, was just following him, man. Go this way, kick this way, look this way. Made it look like I, I knew what I was doing, so it was good. I mean, one day, I think I just walked into a real police station, like through the back door, acting like I belonged there. I, was, I don't know what I said, I don't remember, but I was like, this is Carter, you know, I gotta go find him. You know, I wanted him to be smart. He was doing things his way, uh, differently, you know, and breaking the rules. Put the guns down. Put the guns down. A lot of the scenes was just off the script. I mean, at the improv, Jackie followed me a lot, but he was so good. The chemistry was so great, man. He knew when I went off on something, he was right there with reaction and all that stuff. And with the action, you know, he's the man at, with that. So I just was like, what, what are we gonna do? What, we, what you want me to do? <laughs> He's like, just, uh, just follow me. With the clothes, I think back then that was Versace. The stylist had me like some regular like stuff that everybody wear. I was like, no, no, Carter got a little more edge than this. Then uh, I got this other stylist who went and got me some like Versace belt and, uh, and a couple of Versace things. And the suit was tailored. And man, I said, this is Carter. Let's go in. I want to. Hey, watch his sweetness. He's got some fire to him. Honey cups. I like that. Go get the clothes. Okay, I'm gonna hurry pull, up. I'll pull some items. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Little Kim, I'll be back. You see that? He likes you. Yeah, that was fun, man. That was so much fun. Every time I go to uh, Vegas and go into the Coliseum uh, Mall, I'm like, oh, that's where the shop was. We, we went in and, and Jeremy, was, we, we had a lot of fun doing that, so. Friday. Break yourself, fool! And look what you did to my curtain! You better watch when do you climb in that fool before you get blasted on. With what? Well, that was my first uh, like starring role, co-starring role, and that was like my shot. You let people know I can carry a movie uh, alongside Ice Cube. So I remember just the preparation focus, and we only, like you said, we only had two takes, small budget, and 20 days. Working with Gary Gray was great, you know, smart. You know, he really found the great music for the movie, the great tone. Oh man, he was just genius with that, and putting it together. It was really just me being, you know, the young, the young Chris Tucker, just I uh, knew I would bring that energy and then uh, take it up a notch and animate it a lot to make it fun and funny. Hold up. That gave my heartbeat. Man, that's what it's supposed to do. And the casting with everybody, with Tiny Zeus Lester, I don't know if I mentioned him, he passed away, one of my good friends, legendary uh, Tiny Zeus Lester who played Debo. Casting him, man, as like the big villain coming through like uh, the shark, you know, from, <laughs> from Jaws. And working next to Ice Cube was a uh, Pleasure, man, because Cube, you know, uh, I was a fan of his being a rapper. Uh, the legendary, iconic uh, John Witherspoon and Bernie Mac, those guys, comedy legends and gods, man. You had R Ronaldo Ray and uh, Yvette Wilson, so many legends uh, that was in this movie that passed away. I'm so, so uh, honored to ha have worked with them. Fifth Element. Luke Besson said he wanted wanted a flamboyant character and he wanted like sexuality and all this stuff. I thought of Prince. I thought of, because Prince was supposed to play the part. Declined for some reason. I think because of the wardrobe and because Prince had his own style. And, he, and matter of fact, he told me one time in person, he heard I was doing the movie and he said, I, I, I didn't want to do it. And I was like, oh, and, and all that. I said, okay, all right. So then I was second choice. It was definitely different for me, uh, but I'm so, so glad I, I tackled it and did it because, man, it, it brought out, you know, range in me. I only used probably on stage. So working with Luke Besson, man, was unbelievable. He, we, we filmed in London. He had all these stages, you know, at Pinewoods. And it was like he really was, you know, in another world. 
And uh, man, putting on the outfits and the costumes and all the stuff, man, it just really turned me into a Ruby Rod character. And I really was able to just really let loose. If I would have found out what I was wearing, I probably would have said, nah, nah, nah. But I'm so glad I didn't because it was, it's one of my favorite roles. I definitely did some uh, different type of alt, you know, tell them uh, to try to make this that way. But they were speaking French and they kind of gave me the 52 fakes. I didn't, <laughs> they did what they wanted to do. But I'm glad they did because that's what Luke Besson wanted. And that was what the character was. And it made me go uh, into the character more if I would have did it my way. So I'm glad they didn't listen to me. I love working with directors uh, who write their own scripts and then they know it from back and because they can really tell you what they want. And I like when sometimes they dictate it to me because I can just give it right at, to them. Money talks. Hold up, man. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You that silly ass reporter from the Channel 5 News, ain't you? Channel 12, actually. What's up? I knew it. What's up, man? James Russell, how you doing? All right, what's up? Well, first of all, it was great working with Charlie Sheen. He was, man, the best. Charlie actually fought for me to have first billing. New Line wanted Charlie Sheen to be first billing, but I kind of brought the project, uh, my team brought the project to New Line, and we found it some kind of way. And then they got uh, Charlie for us, and Charlie said, no, 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 he should have first billing. And I'll never forget that, you know, that he did that for me early in my career. I will slap you, man. I will slap the hell out of you. You don't play with me. You don't know who you're messing with. I don't even know when I'm gonna slap somebody. My reflex is just slap people. I'd be like, damn, I, why, did I, why did I do that? I don't even know when I'll be slapping people. I don't know when I'm gonna slap somebody. You keep messing with me. I'm dangerous. I'm scared of myself. I was just going all out trying to get the laughs, trying to make it fun. I just wanted to bring my energy to the screen, man. I was young. I just wanted every scene to be, you know, energy. The character was on the run and I just wanted to just be fun and I was all out. Whatever I could, you know, it, it didn't matter. I was holding nothing back, man. And he came up to the car, right? He said, get out the car, I got out of the car. I said, what you calling back up for, man? Everybody around here for this. Between me and you, I ain't even doing that. They got my license, my registration, everything. What's up now? What's up now? The prison scene was something we came up with on the spot on that day of, because we were so young, we didn't think about it to that day. Like, man, we gotta do something right. We, we were close friends and, and uh, we were really close back then and we just wanted to do something something that's iconic, memorable, because we was like, hey man, we, we gotta do something that's crazy because we can't let this scene get by us. Dead president. All I know is my blood cells are all fucked up. Some nights I wake up in cold sweats and shit. You don't look at me like that, man, it ain't the heroin. The heroin ain't never did nothing to me. I was happy that I got Dead Presidents because I wanted to show a different range that I, I could play dramatic roles early in my career. So that was a lot of fun. I was looking forward to doing that because I did that right after Fridays, I think. So working with the Hughes brothers was great because they had the 60s, 70s music all around the set the whole time, man. And they really put us back into that period, man. The wardrobe, it was just all the stuff they put around us, man, that really made it work. Don't move, mister. And they had to put these contacts in my eyes to, you know, make it seem like I was passed away for a while. And then I had to walk, <laughs> I remember in real life, I had to walk across this cold street in New York. I was freezing that day and I, I couldn't see anything. I think I, they had me on with the robe and already on. And I'm walking through traffic to get to the building where I'm supposed to be. And uh, I remember that and I was like, oh my God, what is this all about? Air. The key to Phil is make him afraid. He gonna get us both damn fired. Phil got a hundred million dollars and a life supply of them damn pink nut hugging jogging shots. The hell is he afraid of? Let's say you get Phil. How the hell you gonna get Mike? Uh, my part wasn't the Howard White part wasn't in the script, so my dialogue and my scenes had to make sense with the script. It had to make the movie move. And the information that I gave in the scene had to work for the for the story, and also for my part, I said yes because Ben was like, you know, we'll fix it, whatever you want to do, we'll we'll make it work. I called Ben the player coach because he he's an actor and a director, and he he knows you know what it takes you know for actors to feel comfortable to get the best out of them and give them that room to do their thing. And great team, I really had a great time working with them. You got them all there. The greatest high school players in the country. You might have forgot about this, but I was invited. Best day of my life. Then I blew out my damn knee. Ah. That don't matter about what 
feel is thinking or anybody's thinking. All that matters is how much do you believe? I believe in you. And Michael said he had to have Howard in the movie because Howard's a big part of Nike. Howard was pretty much the bridge from Nike to uh, Michael. I wouldn't have did it without talking to Howard. It was just uh, amazing how it came about. Just a blessing because, you know, Howard's still here. Howard had a heart, heart transplant, so he, he might have not even been here. I spent hours on the phone with Howard White, my friend Howard, and talking about you know him, and then he put me on the phone with his childhood friends when he was five years old, and doing hot scotch in the neighborhood, riding bikes to his high school teachers and uh, coaches, high school coaches and friends, all the way up to when he mentored uh, Charles Barkley. So he gave me a lot, all this information, and I had to put it all together, and I pretty much wrote all my scenes. I put all that stuff together, and Ben gave me the room to to do whatever I wanted to do. So I I got all the information and embodied his spirit and, and dialect. Uh, it was one of the hardest parts uh, I ever did. And Jackie Brown. Man, you must be out of your fucking mind if you think I'm gonna get in this dirty ass trunk. We ain't going nowhere but to Korea town, man. You ain't gonna be in here no more than 10 minutes. Man, I ain't riding in no goddamn trunk for no minute, man. Why I can't ride up front with you? You can't ride up front with me. The surprise element is 90% of it. I'm sorry, man, but I ain't getting no goddamn trunk. <laughs> they put me in that trunk, though. I didn't know they was going to do me like that in that trunk. <laughs> My fans got mad because they was like, hey, we come to see you in a movie, and you get, you know, knocked off in the first scene. They got, they got mad at me at that time because I was like... Starring in movies, and they wanted to really see me. And then they did it with the uh, strawberry letters. So, you know, that was just, every time I hear that song, I think about that scene. You know, I wanted to do it because, you know, Quentin Tarantino, one of the hottest directors, and you just wanted to work with him to say you worked with him. So it was fun. I knew it was just going to be a quick scene. I, I remember Samuel Jackson working with him, and it was worth it. It was a lot of fun. And Quentin, you know, he was basically like, um, you know, telling me uh, what he wanted, because he talked the way he writes. So it was so natural. That's one of the few directors I kind of, said his words kind of word for word because it was kind of like the, the way I talk a little bit. And... Silver Linings Playbook. He wrote about you, all right. What did he say? He said you guys was helping each other out and you were nice and you you had a mouth on you, but... Whoa, 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 whoa. okay. You okay, a little yeah, mouthy, yeah. but... No, please, tell me more about what he said in the letter. Yeah, anything you want to know, I'll just tell you in the letter. It was nothing. Yeah, I love movies that I can learn something from. You know, uh, mental health uh, is... Uh, big, big thing, and I learned a lot from doing this movie. I love working with directors like David O. Russell, because, like I said, he knows the script so well, he'll tell you to do something, he's off camera throwing stuff at you. He would go around with you with like a monitor and like, I say this, he'll throw stuff at you, throw stuff at you, throw stuff. So I love that, you know, as a coming from the comic world. California love, you rock my world. I remember uh, Tupac had just got out of jail. We were filming in the desert. He came in, it was like unbelievable. He brought all this great energy to the set and we all was having fun because we were celebrating him getting out too. And Michael Clark Duncan saved my life. I'll tell everybody that because we were going over this doom in the desert and I had my hands up. We hit a, a bump and then Michael Clark Duncan grabbed my back of my shirt or vest and kind of pulled me back down. I think I was going over and I was like, thank you, man. Thank you, Michael. Thank you. So he's all, he always got a special place in my heart. Ooh, look at that. Mm. Mm. She look good, huh? She look homeless. Rock My World was a mini movie. It was a, a, a movie like he always did. It was a lot of fun. I think the theme was we were in Cuba or something. Michael uh, Jackson, just a part of everybody's life growing up, a big influence. I noticed that, you know, back all the way from Fridays, I would be doing a dance or a, a acting uh, something out uh, sounding like him in a song. And in Def Jam, even before that in Def Jam, I did a Michael Jackson joke. And then a lot of comedians in Def Jam, everybody had to have a Michael Jackson joke because he's just so huge in everybody's life. <laughs>